Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 237 of the MTG Goldfish Podcast. I'm Seth, probably better known as Seth Rod Olive, and we have the full crew here this week kicking things off with the owner of MTG Goldfish, Richard. What's up, Richard? Hey, Seth. Full deck lists out. Ah, uh, yes, it is Commander Week on the podcast. We had some spoilers last week, but now we have the full deck list. We have all the cards, so that's going to be almost the entire cast talking about sweet new Commander 2019 cards. But before we do that, we got another co-host in Krim. How's it going this week, Krim? It goes, uh, it goes well. <laughs> I'm pretty excited for all the sweet new cards that have, I mean, like, since we now have full spoilers. Yes, uh, I'm excited for it, too. I am excited for Commander 2019 in general. The set is, I think, super sweet. And as I mentioned, that's our main focus for the day, talking about new Commander decks, new Commander cards. And then, of course, at the end, we will also answer fish mail. So I know we're going to jump into a bunch of specific cards we want to talk about, but before we do that, uh, I'm going to spring this on you guys. Which deck is your favorite? Now that we have full deck list for Commander 2019, if I said you could only buy one of these decks uh, and play it right out of the box, which one would you be choosing? Uh, I, for me, I'm going with the Sultai Morph deck. It has. First off, I love Morph. The idea of it is just really fun. And since Kadena looks way, like you know, like it looks more balanced and uh, more like you can play the grindy fair game, you know, with some card advantage. Uh, I, I like it because An- uh, Animar can kind of be a broken at times. Also, comes with Volrath and uh, a few other sweet cards. Yeah, this one is easy. There's only one Timmy deck here. <laughs> so uh, I'm going with Primal Genesis, the Naya, the Naya Populate deck. Big, smashy green creatures. It has Desolation Twin. It's pretty sweet. <sighs> Uh, those are both good choices, and honestly, I think all the decks this year look pretty decent, but I'm going with Merciless Rage. I'm a big... Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, the the Rakdos Madness deck, I really like Anji Falcon Wrath, Anji, Anj, I, I have no idea, but I like that. It's got other cool cards in it. There's some sweet synergy. It's more of like a card advantage synergy-based deck, and those are my favorite style of deck, so I think even though it might be... One of the less powerful decks, because honestly, Madness cards in general are pretty bad, but it's one of the most synergistic, so I think I would choose that one. Wow, you guys gave up the Jeskai deck. Oh. Uh, <laughs> if only it had a three-minute Teferi in it, yeah, Grim would have been all over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the easiest one to upgrade to include Teferi, Grim. Does that That's... do anything for you? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. <laughs> I mean, uh, how do you anyway. beat Thieving Amalgam, right? Like, that's just got to be the <laughs> coolest card. Uh, so, apart from the decks, we got a bunch of cards to talk about. We have almost all the cards uh, from last week. We had a few early in spoiler season, but we got a ton of cards. So, Richard, take it away. Guide us through some sweet new legends and uh, some other cool new cards from Commander 2019. All right, let's go through the legendaries. So, last week we talked... Uh, four face cards, and then we also talked about the morph deck. Uh, so let's start off with my favorite deck, the Timmy deck, Naya. Uh, <laughs> Atla Palani, Nest Tender. One red, green, and a white. Four mana, two, three. Legendary creature, human shaman. Pay two, tap, create a zero, one green egg creature token with defender. Whenever an egg you control dies, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card, put that card onto the battlefield, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This is one of my favorite commanders from the set. I think this card is super cool. It's like a Naya Polymorph commander, essentially, and people have already come up with a combo. Uh, you can use Thornbite Staff to keep untapping your commander, and then Ashdod's Altar to keep sacking the eggs that you make with your commander, and just like put all your creatures from your deck onto the battlefield with a three-card combo. So, combo potential, and just it's fun. Play big dinosaurs, play random whatever I'll draw and just hope that your egg hatches into something good. I think somebody called it the scrambled egg combo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, the flavor win, right? You, you 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 crack your egg and then like out comes a gishath or something. <laughs> Maybe it's a dragon egg as a tulpa comes out. Who knows, right? <laughs> and then you just go to town with it. Or in more, you know, likelihood, it's like a titan will come out or something. <laughs> 
Or some Eldrazi get hatched from this egg. It's like no problem. Or you get like a Llanowar elf. <laughs> no. <laughs> you don't put Llanowar elf in the egg deck, okay? <laughs> it's the I, saddest I, egg ever. <laughs> I'm really hoping that you play Egg Tribal with us, Richard. I think there's six eggs in Magic, which might not be enough to make it work, but I, I'm rooting to see Egg Tribal at some point. Dingus Egg is ready. Um, <laughs> we could go for, like, the full flavor. You, like, Birds of Paradise, it lays an egg, and then, like, like an Allosaurus Rider pops out. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it. We could do it. This is... This is prime for a Jurassic Park themed deck. We we, we got this. It's coming. <laughs> uh, Alright, but I actually think it's a really good card though. Memes aside, you, two mana, tap, sack, and then just get a creature. You can do some pretty broken things. Uh, next up we have Marisa, Breaker of the Coil. One red, green, white. Legendary creature, Cat Warrior. 5-4. Your opponents can't cast spells during combat. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, goad each creature that player controls. Meh. 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 It's Meh. a big cat. That is cool. It is a big cat. And one thing I didn't realize, this, I believe, is our first red cat commander. And there are some red cats. There's, like, Blistering Fire Cat yeah. and Chandra's Ember Cat. So if you want to go, like, I don't know, three color cats. This is like the only option in magic to get those red cats in there. I think I'd rather just get Brima's. <laughs> I don't I, I what do you what do you guys think about the goad mechanic? There's a lot of goading in this set, and I've never really been a fan of goad. It kinda doesn't really do anything for me, but what do you guys think? <laughs> uh it's nice to know that you can force someone's attack force to like swing elsewhere. <laughs> uh, but Eh. I'm not a not a huge goad fan as a mechanic, but I do kind of like this card in the sense that it gives you kind of a pillow forty style commander. Like if you can keep attacking each opponent every turn, you basically make it so they can't attack you. But it's a pillow forty commander that also incentivizes you to attack, which is kind of nice because a lot of pillow fort decks just do this like sit back and dirtle and never kill anyone and just try to like lock everyone out of killing them. So I, I think it's kind of like a cool paradigm that you have this pillow fort style commander with this potentially like fog everyone every turn from attacking you, but it also is requiring you to like get in damage and progress the game. I, I'd rather just have vigilance. Yeah. <laughs> then, then I can block. And, you know, what if I got a cat token whenever I attacked or blocked as well? Then it'd be pretty The token sweet. can goad. <laughs> That's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't, I don't, goading is weird because if your opponent's creatures are big and scary, they're probably attacking anyway. And then if they're Lawn of War elves, like, you know, <laughs> okay, now they get to attack someone they can't block, but were they really going to start chumping with Lawn of War elves? So <laughs> it's a weird mechanic. Okay. Last legendary from the Naya deck. Tangrath, first mate, two red and a green, four CMC, five five. Legendary creature, Minotaur Warrior. Tangrath can't be blocked by more than one creature. Whenever an opponent attacks with one or more creatures, if Tangrath is tapped, you may have that opponent gain control of Tangrath until end of combat. If you do, choose a player or planeswalker that opponent is attacking. Tangraph is attacking that player or planeswalker. Uh, <laughs> Can you just kill someone in like one turn? Like potentially. Like you attack someone and then everyone else just attacks a Lana War Elf taking your Tangarth and like someone takes twenty commander damage <laughs> like throughout the turn cycle. Yeah, and commander damage does work that way. I actually had to confirm that because I wasn't sure, but it does count no matter who controls the commander, it still adds up. Right, right. This just a question. This is the same Tongarth from, like, Planar Chaos? Or, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. pla is it Plane Shift? The one with the swirly, it's a Corian Dryad or something, right? Isn't it? Yeah, it's the is same it, Tongarth. like, the, the Weatherlight? Character. Yeah. Like, this is, like, the super old Tangarth, right? Yeah. I think it's the, 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 the mono, it was mono red before, and he just had fancy vigilance. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Right? <laughs> Okay. I, I actually like this commander because there's like this weird almost rules quirk you can take advantage of uh, by kind of playing this like strange Voltron-y deck. Uh, the best cards to use with this are like the sword cycle. The sword cycle 
doesn't actually give a creature an ability. It says when this creature dam uh, deals damage, you get the benefit from the sword. Like so, like sort of fire nice. When the creature deals damage, you get to draw a card and deal two damage to something. So that means no matter who's controlling uh, the Tangrath, you're going to get those triggers. So load it up with swords and other things that have that style of ability, and you could potentially be like drawing four cards each turn cycle as everyone is attacking with your Tangrath. So I think that's like a really neat way of kind of playing this commander. This this is a pretty interesting card. I don't know. I mean, like... <laughs> so, if I, like, I, I'm just, like, rereading the second text box just, like, to make sure that it's uh, <laughs> the way I think it works. And it, it is, right? So, like... <laughs> so, if I... If my turn... Ta- ta- so, say I attack Seth. Okay? Yeah. He takes five commander damage. Right. Then it's your turn. I... If you attack anyone... Yeah. <laughs> Right? So of the players you attack, I can choose Tangarth to go at one of those players. So if you attack Seth, then I can send Tangarth at Seth as well. I, I don't know if I like this example. <laughs> let's, let's attack Tomer. <laughs> and then Tomer's turn comes around, and he's like, I hit Seth. So by the time it gets to Seth's turn, he takes I'm 15 dead. commander damage. Now, he won't attack himself on his turn, right? So I can't... I most likely cannot send Tangarth at him to finish the job, but... In this example, we could also say that Seth wants to attack himself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but really, though, like, that example, and you have any one sword that gives plus two, plus two, and that's 21. Yeah. yeah. And protection from colors. Or, like, a ranker. A ranker and a dark steel plate. What are you going to do about that? You're going to kill someone, and everyone's going to team up on me, and I won't be able to dirtle and draw cards. I'm not happy about this. <laughs> <laughs> if you give it lifelink, you know, that's like 21 life or 15 life coming around. Uh, if you help so, the host this thing, oh, is that interesting? Oh. <laughs> take, take all my tokens and attack someone. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of lifelink, I should say, if you build around this, you gotta be a little careful, because let's say you put Loxodon Warhammer on it, which gives the creature lifelink, then whoever controls the commander is gonna gain the life. So you want something that's like, when this creature deals no, 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 damage, but, but that's you fine, gain right? that much life. Oh, wait, yeah. wait, wait, they gain control of Tarn... Oh, yeah, so they'll gain the life. Yeah, so you wanna look for stuff that doesn't actually give the creature ability, but says when this creature does something, you get some benefit. Oh, this is dangerous, though, because they can just, like, Ashnod's altar your Tongarth. <laughs> that that like, is Thanks. also true. <laughs> yeah, that, that can be a little sketch. <laughs> just sack it. They can oh. be a little, little backfiring. All right. Uh, let's move on to the Jeskai deck. Uh, we have Elsha of the Infinite. Did we talk about Elsha? I don't know if we did. I don't, I don't think we I did. I don't think Maybe so. Two blue, red, and a white. Three, three, Dijin Monk. Jin? Dijin. Jin. Dijin. Prowess. <laughs> you may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature card, non-land card, and you may cast it as though it had flash. I'm glad Wizards put infinite in the name in case anyone was wondering what you do with this commander. <laughs> like, like you just literally try to go infinite with it. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, uh, I think the card's pretty cool. I like the fact that it's prowess and it's pretty much just like <laughs> your own experimental frenzy. So <laughs> I think that's cool. You can't play the land though. That's the only thing that's a little unfortunate. And it's also casting, so that means you give the opponent a chance to counter it. <laughs> you want, you want to just put it directly onto the stack. Like I don't yeah, know. I just, like, what do you? I, I want to play the card. Okay. I, I, but like also, oh, you want I, to play it so you could get the lands out as well. Yep, exactly. You may play this card. That I, you know, what, what, that's fine. You just draw your whole deck as soon as you resolve it. Uh, I think the most powerful thing you do with this is uh, Sensei's Divining Top. Sensei's Divining Top in. Anything that makes uh, Sensei's Divining co- Top cost one less, like a Cloud Key or there's like a Therium Sculptor, there's a ton of ways to make an artifact or a colorless card cost one less. Then you get to draw your entire deck because you just like activate top, put it back on your deck. Uh, you draw a card when you do that. Then you can cast top again for free to draw another card. Uh, and you also make Elsha infinitely big, essentially, or like very big because you're getting all these prowess triggers. And then you could just like fling it at someone or like gravatic <laughs> punch someone or something. <laughs> Like that's what I want to do with uh, with Elsha. There's an easy thing. you can just attack. <laughs> yeah, that's less fun. <laughs> <laughs> you could also do like what if there's where you get like all the mana, then you just uh, what is it, alter the brood, and then and then you could also just keep using the top over and over to mill somebody out. Mm. Yeah, that would work. Also works uh, really well with the same type of cards that make 
like future Psy experimental frenzy work things that allow you to like mill the top card of your deck to get through those extra lands. Uh, Lantern control style cards are pretty powerful with Algia. Or you could just like play a storm deck, like play rituals and brainstorms and things like that and try to go tall, I guess, but not actually infinite with Elsha. Oh, you can. What's that? That's like that four mana white enchantment that you can remove planes from your deck. Oh, is it, it is does horizons. it have to be basic, or is it just it's planes? any planes? Yeah, so just make your entire deck planes, cast that, and hope no one Armageddon's, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you go infinite right there, right? The other thing, yeah, as long as it was all non-creature, non-land spells, and yeah. you also had the mana to cast them, because you don't have yeah. to spend the mana on it. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, that would definitely be a way to take advantage of this. Plus, I guess you could play like Monk Tribal, Jin Tribal. Like there, there's a couple of tribal aspects to it as well. Are there enough? Oh. Like, how many good gins are there? I think there's actually a lot because they've been being printed since basically like Alpha. I think we've yeah, had gins. They're not that. I, I played a gin deck before. They're not that. Was good. there not them? <laughs> I don't think they're good, but I think there's quite a few of them. <laughs> Remember that time I built my deck around Zahid not <laughs> yeah. understanding his mechanic? Yes. Well, Salad. Be- before I did that, I was like, I'm going to make the Jin Tribal. And then like, I'm like, wow, there's like no- none of these, right? They're like pretty bad. <laughs> like, they're yeah. just like kind of like five power uh, and X toughness, and then they all fly, right? Yeah, but there's like three or four like okay ones, and then the rest kind of suck like Mahamadi the Jin is still one of the better ones <laughs> uh okay next up we have Pramicon Sky Rampart yeah blue red and white 1-5 legendary creature wall flying defender as Pramicon Sky Rampart enters the battlefield choose left or right each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction, and planeswalkers controlled by that opponent. Isn't there uh, like there's there's a a buddy of mine we were talking about? There's another wall that kind of does something like this. So eventually, if you choose left and then you choose right, or you could just like clone it with like a, a like spark double or something like that. So then this way you have two copies, and yep. that just means no one can attack. Pretty much. <laughs> that sounds pretty fun. That's, I that's mean, cool it's like someone threw down an ensnaring bridge. Yeah. Right? And you're like, huh, I guess I can't attack anymore. But yeah. yeah, it just stops combat if you clone this and choose both directions. I mean, And it's like the first legendary wall, I think, in the history is. of magic. And like you can build an actual wall deck and not like a cheaty wall deck with like... Phoenix or something? Like, yeah, like Phoenix or... Arcades. Arcades. Like this is just straight up a wall that does nothing. <laughs> is this card good though? Like I like the flavor of it. I like it's the first uh it's the first legendary wall. Is this something you would actually build a deck around outside of being like, ah, I'm playing wall tribal, haha. I, I feel it's like a pillow fort type card. Yeah. Where you you choose the person with like the crappy attack and you let them be able to attack you, right? And then, so that's the direction you choose. And then everyone else kills each other, and you're sitting here with walls, and then you somehow win with something. You loop I mean, mnemonic walls somehow and win. <laughs> we <laughs> laugh, like but stone. Tomer has one with Ayula, so that kind <laughs> of... <laughs> and that is just a bear, right? So, and a, and a bunch of tutus. So, I could see this wall being something fun. I don't know if it would be, like... CDH or anything like that, but it'd be a lot of fun. All right, and then the last legendary from this uh, was Gerard, which we talked about. Uh, so let's move on to the Rakdos deck. We have Chainer, Nightmare Adept, two black and a red, legendary creature, human minion, 3-2, discard a card, you may cast a creature card from your graveyard this turn, activate this ability once each turn, Whenever a non-token creature enters a battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until your next turn. This feels like a crim card to me. Like, you can give all of your Rise of the Dark Realms creatures haste and just kill people right away. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, reanimate a demon. You could reanimate a demon and it would be a hasty demon. I am very excited about this card, so you have, that's a very good read. <laughs> You don't know me, <laughs> but no, no, like, I, I genuinely was... Is this was... worth it, though? Uh, you, it's red, so you could just have an anger and a mountain, <laughs> right, for your Rise of the Dark Realms. 
<laughs> but why not have more things that can do that, right? Like more reanimation things. Like, I don't know. I think this is pretty sweet. And it's only four mana, and it's Chainer. Also, because, yeah, I wanted to reanimate things. And, it, yeah, it works well with the old Chainer, because then you reanimate stuff, and it has haste, and you discard stuff to reanimate with old Chainer, so you can do, like, Chainer or Tribal. <laughs> Actually, I think, honestly, this is a card that I'm more excited about in the 99 than a Commander. I think it's really sweet in reanimation decks in the 99. I don't know if I would choose it to be my Commander in those decks, but I imagine in the 99, you can just discard it, get in the graveyard with a bunch of other stuff, then when you, like, Living Death or whatever, all of a sudden, all of your stuff's coming back with haste? That seems pretty powerful to me. Yeah. I mean, is it the first part, the important part of this card, though? I, <laughs> I like that part the most. But you guys really like the haste, like, like anger. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm very confused. <laughs> I thought the whole point of this card is it's a discard outlet, but you also get to cast something. So I don't know that it's necessarily like a reanimator type card, right? Because you, you're not going to be able to cast your like six or seven drops without cheating them into play. It's more of a like a, a value, like, I don't know, a Giralf's Messenger casting <laughs> card, right? No, you use you use creatures that reanimate stuff, I think. Like uh, Phyrexian Delver or whatever, stuff like that. Then you can discard the card, and then you can cast a reanimation creature oh. and get back the the big hasty thing got that it, you're got trying it, to reanimate. That, that, I think that would be my plan with this card. Also, at late game, when I'm, like, at 400 million mana, I could also just cast... <laughs> <laughs> the, the like I could turn my lands or whatever my random like mana rocks into a bigger creature. Yeah. And I think like uh the reason it's like this is probably to support the madness theme. It does work well with madness. You can like discard a madness card and cast that uh, with its madness ability and then just essentially draw a card by casting uh, a random creature from your graveyard. So I think like it works well with the madness theme of the deck too. All right. Next we have Graven Predator Captain 3 black and red 5/5 five, five, legendary creature human warrior menace. Graven gets plus X plus zero, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. When Graven attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, draw cards equal to that creature's power, and you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. Cool. I guess I get to fling some stuff at people. You, what? You're not <laughs> or, actually fling, You get you to get draw to, cards. <laughs> sorry, not, not fling. So you get, you get to draw cards, and I'm okay with that, too. You, so, so you I, can either... So if you want to go and try to one-shot someone, you play high-toughness creatures. And if you just want to draw lots of cards, then you play low-toughness creatures, like... That's pretty know. much what I'm thinking of. Like you can Ball draw lightning, cards. right? Draw six cards, lose one life. Yeah, I think I'll take that deal. <laughs> Blightning Skelemental. <laughs> <That's, laughs> I could I could put that in EDH. That's fun. Okay, what what is the biggest like wall thing? What 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 has like the biggest <laughs> toughness in red black? Oh. Like hmm. can you one sh you what do you need? You need <laughs> you need sixteen <laughs> you need sixteen toughness to one shot something. And you, I think you, you have your own hatred here. <laughs> I think you guys are doing this the really hard way because it gets plus X plus zero for the amount of life you've lost, which means you can lose life anyway. You don't have to necessarily do it by sacrificing creatures, which means like, for example, here's a really easy one. You attack someone with Grieven, wait till they don't block. Then you cast Plunge into Darkness, which is just two mana instant. You can pay X life. Look at the top X cards of your library and put one in your hand and the rest get exiled. So you just pay 20 life or whatever 16 life to make this 21 power and someone's dead for two mana or like necropotence you draw a bunch of cards you're like losing a bunch of life you get a new hand and you hit someone for a huge chunk of damage so i think like i think that's what scares me about this card is if someone attacks me with this i'm gonna feel like i'm probably just dead here like even <laughs> if there's no other creatures on the battlefield i'm gonna be expecting them to have like something that all of a sudden makes this 20 power and kills me Yep, I mean, and the good old Death Shadow play, right? They're like, okay, yeah. I cycle Street Wraith, crack my fetches, <laughs> gut shot you, uh, and dismember this other thing, then you're dead. <laughs> right? You can yeah, and then you can even, like, fling it at someone else and maybe get the old two-for-one. Like, kill one person by attacking and then fling it at another person. Yep. And, and we then, have Kyrick, right? We have yeah, that's Kyrick what I was is thinking. In this deck, so you can have all the Phyrexian mana. 
or we Bolas also, of Citadel? Whew. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, like Kirik and like something like Argyle's Bloodfast. <laughs> Just yeah, draw, draw a ton of cards along the way or Greed. Yeah, either or, or Erebos. Any one of those. And then you can have a whip of Erebos to make sure you don't die here. <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's pretty good. Or, I like, there's... I mean, no, 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 hold on. I think you need a target, right, for Phyrexian Unlife? Ooh, Phyrexian Unlife, yeah. And it's kind of in the wrong colors. Although you could build, Phyrexian... build it around a different commander. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. I'm, I'm not th- no, sorry. Phyrexian Reclamation. That's what I'm thinking of. Like, oh. yeah, no, you need... Oh. Right, the one which, is it only one, one is... black to reanimate, or I mean, not reanimate to bring it back to your hand? I think it's one black and two life. Yeah, Wait, and there's what does it do? There's the the enchantment that like you can return a creature from your graveyard. Oh, to your hand. There's there's also treasonous ogre, which is like the weird conspiracy card where it's just pay three life, add one red mana, kind of a a bit of a combo. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can just there's lots of ways to like just a reanimate. <laughs> yeah. You can lose a ton of life easily. Uh so yeah. I, I, and then since you're in black, you can gain that life back. You got like exsanguinates and gray merchants. Like black has a lot of life link and life gain. So you can spend a bunch of life or like soul exchange or something <laughs> to go low on life and then switch life totals with someone else. <laughs> Come on, don't don't laugh. Don't laugh. <laughs> I'm going to do that to both of you now. Look out. I'm coming for you with my soul exchange. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this is the last legendary. Grismold, the Dreadsore? Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one a black and a green. A 3 3 troll shaman trample. At the beginning of your end step, each player creates a 1 1 green plant creature token. When a creature token dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Grismold, the Dreadsore. <laughs> I just really like the name of Grismold. <laughs> I, mean, I I just like that it's like this weird troll and he has like moss growing on him. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a cool card. Is, I feel like this is... You, you must have like a plague engineer or something. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just giving everyone like all these yeah. free plants like ready to kill you, right? <laughs> I mean, I think, yes, I think it's bad and they need to build around it, but I, what I want to do with it is play stuff that intentionally gives opponents tokens, uh, like dousing dagger type effects, and then play stuff to kill the tokens, like illness in the ranks gives all tokens negative one, negative one, and then throw in like doubling season or something, and then this gets really big really quickly, and then you can play like blood artists, so whenever those tokens die, they're draining people. That's what I want to do, is like this weird voltron aristocrat give you like group slug almost give you stuff but it's actually hurting you rather than helping you uh and yes I think black has enough of those effects that it's actually de- like you have the engineered plague type cars you have illness curse and of hold, curse of death yeah. hole living living death no what's the four mana one oh the, from kamigawa the one that people just... actually play in modern <laughs> Oh, uh, Night, Night of, Night of Souls, Souls Betrayal. Night of Souls Betrayal, yeah. So you have all of those effects, and then you have it like, uh, you have like Forbidden Orchard, like things like that to give more tokens. So Hungry Links, I think, makes a cat token or a, a rat token uh, <laughs> every turn for everyone. These there, poor, there's these some weird, rats. janky ways to do it. <laughs> And then I don't know. You get you get a Hogak out of this. You get like an eight eight trample oh. <laughs> on your turn. <laughs> Add red to it, and then you could start playing Ferocidon, right? Because ramp is rampaging Ferocidon banned. I don't think it is, right? No, no it's, it's not, not banned. But it's, yeah, it's the raw colors. But there's like yeah, you add red to it. Curse. You play Jund. Trespassers curse <laughs> does it. There there are some ways to drain people when tokens come into yeah, play. I mean, blood, I, blood artist is pretty good, right? Blood artist, Zulaport Cutthroat. Yeah. I don't think the deck would be good, but I think it's unique and fun. Well, yeah, those cards require it to die. That's why you just add red, and then you play Frostland. Every They take one. No one gains What if someone plays a Rest in Peace? Well, Ooh. who, who <laughs> would play Graveyard play. Hate? Who, a in command, point, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody would ever play that. It's like this elaborate, like, eight-card setup, and someone's just, like, Rest in Peace. <laughs> so you're oh, like, no. my whole deck. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you, Grim. <laughs> Never. All right. So I think that's all the legendaries, all the new ones, right? And then there are some reprint legendaries and also Planeswalkers, which we won't get into, but they're all reprints. Uh, so let's move on to some other new cards. 
Oh, wait, uh, wait, 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 though. Before, before you go on it, I did mm-hmm. not notice how many sweet reprints there were, though. Like, Chrome Shell Crab, all these cards, <laughs> like, these sweet new artworks. Like, I knew, I know those cards originally existed, but, like, there's so much cool new artwork. Bane of the Living. Uh, okay, but yeah, all right. I was, I was not expecting Chrome Shell Crab to be yeah, the Chrome card Shell you crab. mentioned when you were like, so many sweet reprints. Chrome Shell oh, Crab. Sorry, with new, with new artwork? <laughs> Come yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah, the cool. art is super sweet. Yeah, and it's a cool card. It is a it is a cool card. And also, I how they you ever get Chrome Shell Crab? They switch stuff with you, and it's like, oh yeah, that feels good. <laughs> yeah, I've never figured out how they choose what gets new art. There doesn't yeah. seem to be any. Apparently, they ask to him. It. They're like, "What card do you want to yeah. see?" He's Yo, like, Chrome, Chrome Shell crab. crab. That's that's the hotness <laughs> out there. <laughs> But like Vein of the Living also looks really cool and it's like oddly kind of cute and smiling but like creepy. <laughs> All right. Uh Eon Engine, 5 mana artifact. It enters the battlefield tapped. You tap it, exile it, reverse the game's turn order. <laughs> I love this card. It's the first time we've ever had this ability. It amazes me that we're on, what, year 26 of Magic now? And there's still, like, brand new things that have never been done. After 26 years of making multiple sets, like, many sets each year, I don't know if the card's really good, but I think it's really unique. And it's kind of like a extra turn spell, almost, like, with weird extra steps thrown in where you can't take immediately two turns in a row, but you can, like, take two turns with letting one person go in between i don't know yeah. what do you guys think about this one i that's what i was thinking like just letting like it's like you get let someone go in between on like your extra turn uh you just gotta make this untap and then you just do it again <laughs> i guess like if you're if the way the ordering goes and where you sit at the table there's potentially a way where you just don't and like you have a way to untap it there's one person that just never gets to take their turn yeah. Right? You do have to exile it, so you need oh, you one extra, to... like a, a mechanized production or some way to keep making copies of it, because you do have to exile it when you activate it. <laughs> no. It's so but... slow. Like, it, it's five <laughs> mana. It enters tapped, so even if you, like, start mechanizing, productioning it, it's, like, tapped ones, right? And... I... <laughs> Well, I don't know. You you get a temporary extra turn, right? Like the the it will actually. You guys are thinking way too big picture. There's also just the fact that like, what if, like you know, Seth or Tomer is just really excited they got to go first, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, well, wait, hold on. <laughs> so like, you permanently get to replace like re- like reverse the game's turn order, right? Right. Yeah. Yes. So it changes, like, the order of turns. And I, but I don't know that it's worth a card. And I don't know that you can really abuse it in any way other than making it, like, the world's slowest extra turn. Like, if yeah. you end the game right there, then you get the, you know, it's actually an extra turn, right? So you can set up your combo. No, no, so far. You play this thing. <laughs> let it untap. Set up your combo. Let your opponent go... You know, during the upkeep practice, so by the end of their turn, you get another turn, right? But why don't you just play, like, uh, what is, what is like, the card that gives you an extra turn and then you die? <laughs> oh, like Last Chance or something. Like, like one of those spells, right? Like, this is so temporary. What about as a political weapon? Like, couldn't you imagine if you have this sitting out untapped? Be like, hey, maybe you should do this, or I'm going to reverse the turn order so you don't get to take a turn this time around the table. Yeah. I think I think that works. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like just taking a straight up extra turn is better. And at five mana enters the battlefield tapped. <laughs> like you should probably just you know, take your extra turn. The thing yeah, is that... this allows non blue decks to do it though. Non blue and non red. So in you know, Kithkins, <laughs> if I wanted to take an extra turn, I have the option. A temporary extra turn. <laughs> oh, don't you usually... Yeah, never mind. Go ahead. <laughs> like, what good is the extra turn Kithkin, though? You're going to get in for four with your one one. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh-oh. Oh, no. The Kithkins are coming This, is, this is the appeal. If I was a blue deck and I played this tap, you know everyone's just going to murder you on the spot, right? But I'm like, look, I have mono white. I have four power. It's fine. <laughs> Everything is fine. I mean, you put this in demons with Liliana's contract... <laughs> Uh, oh yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I don't have to wait it's a whole good. turn anymore. That's actually, that actually not bad. Those, like, next upkeep, something happens. <laughs> you can do yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, that's also a really good point because this is already sitting on the battlefield. So you can use your mana to, like, play your demons and have, like, a almost an extra turn spell that's free, quote unquote, because you already paid the five mana the turn before. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of, I like that. That's a really good point. So did we actually have a reverse the turn order silver bordered card? Oh, Do I don't know? believe so, but I could be wrong. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. When I first saw this card, I'm like, this is so fake. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? I'm like, well, you know, reversing the turn order. That's a, that's a silver border mechanic. Like, what are we doing with this in C19? But, well, yeah, that's, that's where we are. Uh, next up, we have Song of the World Soul. Four white, white enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell, populate. Is Hold on, that's... I need to find this card. <laughs> Is that worth six mana? Maybe. I think, like, it can be really powerful if you get, like, a token copy of something. Like, imagine a token copy of, like, Torrential Gear Hulk, and you can, like, cast a spell, populate, to copy Torrential Gear Hulk, to cast a spell for free from a graveyard, to populate, to make a Torrential Gear Hulk, to cast another spell for free from a graveyard, <laughs> oh, to populate. I see where this is going. <laughs> like, something like that could be pretty sweet with this card. Like, a, a weird combo. Yeah. I think it sounds sweet. Would you play sweet. it for value? I'd play it for value more than anything. It's almost like the value Splinter Twin. <laughs> <laughs> that, I mean, like what what kind of value like that like i think your token has to be good and like if i'm cloning a lingering souls token i don't think this is worth it but like seth said if you have like a token copy if you had a helm of the host or something then this starts getting good uh you know even just like a clue token would be pretty good oh that's better than like a 4-4 four, four rhino <laughs> How and dare you? <laughs> it's in the colors of Siege uh, Rhinos smothering you a visit. <laughs> so, Ooh, Or what about, you could like kind of storm with treasure, like yeah. turn stuff into rituals almost by copying treasure tokens. That's, I kind of like this card. Even like if you're just playing a regular token deck, even just all your spells come with a kicker of whatever your best token is. Like, that seems good. Like, that seems really powerful. If it sits out on the battlefield for a couple turns, like, even if you're copying one once, that's just free value once this is out there. Well, free after the price of six. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah. <laughs> you gotta pay the six to get it going, but once it's out, it gets pretty good. Yeah, I think I like it. I think, and then especially since Wizards keeps making more ways to make tokens, it's just gonna get better over time. Helm of the Host tokens. <laughs> yeah, Helm of the Host tokens. Like, mechanized production tokens. Like, there's all kinds of things you can do that are beyond your generic 1-1 one, one soldier. You can uh, populate uh, the plant tokens from Git Grismold. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, no. <laughs> no, no. no. Oh, can, no. It's out of control now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, think yeah. I, I think I got it. You make a token copy of Biovisionary. Then you make a bunch of bio visionaries. Then you reverse the turn order <laughs> with our last card, and then you win the game. We are online. <laughs> we are online. Broke the, it. Broke it's it. not that. You, all you got to do is just. <laughs> oh no, they're, it's the wrong deck though. Hmm. <laughs> you got to buy two Commander nineteen decks <laughs> and get a bio visionary upgrade, <laughs> and then you got it. Uh, next up, we have a bloodthirsty blade. Two generic artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus zero, and is goaded. Pay one generic mana, attach bloodthirsty blade to target creature and opponent controls. Activate this ability anytime you could cast the sorcery. So I'm the one that wanted to talk about this card mostly because I think this card is really good and I haven't heard anyone talking about it. I think if you're playing an equipment matters deck where you can tutor up equipment or like a SRAM where you're drawing cards from equipment, this is great. This is like a cheap tutorable card for your equipment deck that's repeatable removal. For one mana, you put it on your opponent's best thing, it can't attack you anymore. Eventually, it's going to trade off in combat because other people aren't going to want to get attacked by someone's best thing. Trades off, then for one more mana, you put it on the next best thing. So you can basically like lock down the best creature your opponents have from attacking you for the rest of the game, for like one mana here and there. <laughs> yeah. Would you play it in a non synergy <sighs> deck? Is it good? Enough? It's basically one mana at sorcery speed temporarily deal with the, with the creature. Oh, 
Uh, I'm mostly excited about it if you have some sort of synergies for equipment or artifacts or ways to tutor them up or something. But maybe? I don't know. I would definitely play it in basically any equipment deck. Because we don't really have cheap equipment removal options. There's like Argentum armor, but that's really expensive. I don't know if I would just play it in random generic deck, though, with no synergies. I uh, I like I like the flavor text, by the way. The... <laughs> I, I, I'm i sorry, like, the card is, like, the art is really cool. I'm, like, looking at it, and it kind of also, for a second I thought it was Keanu Reeves, but it but that's, that's <laughs> This is actually a promotional card for John Wick 4. Yeah, John Wick 4 coming out next year. <laughs> He's going to use this. <laughs> so, so you, like, mechanize production, and then you you play the populate thing we talked about. And then you just equip all of your opponent's creatures and let everyone kill each other, and you're the last one standing. <laughs> it's also really weird that you literally can't equip it on your own creature. I think it's the first equipment that's been like that. Like, there's no normal equip cost, so you can't just be like, oh, I'm going to put this on my thing and get plus two power. <laughs> Wait, what if, like, can you Sigarda's aid it onto your own creature? Like, You could with, like, Sigarda's aid or some <laughs> weird way to equip it. <laughs> And then I don't know why. Yeah, like I made a great crashes. mistake. It's like it's like fused to my hand. <laughs> you went through like, so many hoops just to make it so you get plus two, plus zero. Yeah. <laughs> but then you become Keanu Reeves. That's true. Like that is boss. true. John Wick Four <laughs> is then your life. <laughs> All right. Next up, we have Meyer in Misery, one in a black. Sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. I wish this were like <laughs> in standard. <laughs> just because I'm thinking Jam- of like Jamoka's command. <laughs> honestly, like black, like just mono black or like a Grixis deck has another way to now potentially remove an enchantment. Uh, and, and I like that. But who plays like just an enchantment but no creatures? Prison because decks. you gotta like do some legwork here, right? If you want to actually get rid of enchantment, you gotta like clear their creatures and then cast this. That's not so, a problem, right? Uh, I think there's very specific cases where this is really good, like uh, against Oath of Druid decks in Vintage. That's a deck that has a game-winning enchantment, but literally doesn't want creatures because it needs to trigger Oath of Druid. So this gives your black deck. A pretty clean answer to that. Or, like, Blood Moon decks, Mono Red Prison and Legacy. Like, there are some creatures, but there's a decent amount of board states where Blood Moon is, like, the only enchantment, and there's no creatures, and it gives your deck a way to get out from under a Blood Moon, maybe? So I think this is one of the more unique cards, or more powerful cards for older formats, uh, non-Commander formats, and Commander I think this is bad. Yeah. Like, what are the odds that you actually get a en- the enchantment you want with this in Commander? It seems very low. No, but even in Commander, if it's two mana, everyone sacrifices a creature. That's decent, right? Oh, but then okay, when, yeah. when when you do that, and then there's always this one guy named Saffron Olive at the table <laughs> that has cast no creatures but has, like, a Phyrexian <laughs> arena, right? Then you just randomly get him, right? <laughs> you could also potentially guess, make him oh, sack Planar so. Voids. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I believe this is literally the first black card that can theoretically deal with an enchantment in Magic's history. Another first. So close to actually just dealing with an enchantment. (laughs) Would this be too good for standard or modern? Not really. I don't think it'd be too good. Right? It's not like, yeah. you know what I mean? I if, if, if we have eight eights on turn two with trample, right? <laughs> that potentially get back Vengevines and other things. Like, <laughs> I, I don't I'll think. I'll sack my blood gas. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I guess I'll sack the Stitcher supplier, but I really didn't want to. <laughs> Standard, I could see where, like, I mean, Liliana's Triumph exists, <laughs> but. Like, th- that doesn't hit a potential enchantment. And as I said, this could be like, ah, Grixis's way of finally getting rid of that darn Wilderness Reclamation. Yeah, it seems really good against Wilderness Reclamation. Do you think this means that we will see more of this in black? Like, now that we have this card, is it only a matter of time until this effect shows up in standard or modern? Well, I think how long did it take us to get to this point? 26 years? <laughs> so, so 
another 26 years from now? Yeah, 26 <laughs> years from now, it will just actually target the enchantment. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I think we'll get a, I get a single player version of this. Now, whether it be available for standard, I think it does nothing in standard. I don't think it's important in <laughs> standard. Whoa. Like, we, like already, we already have Modern Edicts, Horizons right? 2. Yeah, I think... I think I would like to see this in modern. Would you play it? Maybe. So now with everyone playing like weird go wide decks, it's not good, right? But if people are playing boggles, right? Stuff stuff with hexproof, uh I don't know, like emeralds. I guess as a sorcery feed, this doesn't help you. Uh, you know, you could do that. But I feel the worst thing as a Jun player is having dead removal. Uh, so against a control deck, I'm like, okay, there goes your uh, Ascanta, right? Or there goes your D Sphere, right? Or there goes Blood Moon, something like that. Oh, so I, I feel wait. like it just gives you a card that's live against more more decks, and you're already like sacrificing creatures of Liliana anyway. So the it's not that bad to you know if they they kill their Elf or something, it's like usually fine. So I feel like you would you this might show up as sideboard card or you might slot some in but assassin's trophy is pretty good so i don't know assassin's gives, trophy does the same thing it gives dredge another way to potentially remove rest in peace and <laughs> oh yeah that's right oh, yeah, it that's... removes rest in peace never mind Leyline this can't be in modern <laughs> Leyline, oh, how about, oh yeah this no, can't be in modern no, this is bad <laughs> <laughs> we've nope. given our enemies more <laughs> weapons <laughs> Ooh. You're like so, Leyline of the Void. They're like, why your misery? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a creature. I'm only into one. <laughs> <laughs> so we should probably get to Fishmail here shortly. I think that pretty much brings us to the end of our Commander 2019 discussion. But oh, let uh, us know what wait, you wait. think about these cards in the comments. Oh, did I miss something? Yeah. So did you know Chrome Shell Crab was reprinted? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank you. It, with, just, with new just, art, perhaps? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, potentially with new art. Just Chrome uh, Shell Crab Guy here coming in just saying, Chrome Shell Crab Crim. Thanks for the Chrome Shell update. Yep, no problem. Anytime. I was wondering about that. It's been like 15 minutes before I had thought about it. So, <laughs> um, so we're going to get to fish mail, but before we do, one other super quick topic. It came out this morning. Aaron Forsyth said that no emergency banning. So next being our update, like two weeks from now, obviously, Obviously, this is mostly because people have been thinking slash talking about Hogak and Modern, a couple of big GPs coming up. What do you think about the no emergency banning decision? Should Wizards have made an exception in this case? Does it set a bad precedent? Uh, good, bad? What's your opinion? Save bad. me a hundred bucks at Magic Fest Vegas. <laughs> I mean, it, this will I'm ensure not that Modern you... with Hogak. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, but like that does that does raise the concern though, right? Like how many people are. Thinking what Richard's thinking, right? Like, oh, I don't really want to go and play Hogak for like 15 rounds of magic, right? Like, or, or get play against it. So I'm going to just go play side events. I'm going to go watch paint dry. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like the, the thing is though, I, I, although I do agree with not banning anything because it makes sense. Cause like all the people that have been play testing, uh, cause I think there's actually an event this weekend right this upcoming weekend there's two big modern gps gp birmingham this week in the uk and then vegas after that right so with this upcoming week then you have like all the people that have been play testing leading into this event and then of course there's vegas so i think it's going to happen after vegas if it's going to be if there's going to be any kind of banning right yeah it's the monday after gp vegas the 26th is the next bnr and I basically consider it confirmed at this point that Hogak will be banned. Like, Marrow said it was a mistake in the last week on his Twitter, and just, like, the signs and hints coming out of it. Like, I would be floored if it wasn't banned uh, at the next announcement. But doesn't that make this worse? Like, if we all know it's going to happen, then just make it happen rather than, you know, basically waste a month of modern, right? And, like, kind of... It is the end of modern season, right? Yeah. I guess... Like, my it's getting counter, close to it. My main counter argument, I guess, uh, personally, I would have liked an emergency banning just because I'd like modern to be better. But I do think, like, we already tend to fall prey to, like, ban hysteria in the community where a deck wins a tournament and it's like, oh, we got to ban this. And it becomes this, like, big thing. Uh, so I think if people had it in the back of their minds that, like, oh, maybe wizards will just, like, emergency ban stuff. 
I think the precedent is a little worrisome that maybe the ban hysteria will get even more intense and it'll just be constantly the main topic of conversation on social media and Reddit. And because there's always cards people don't like. Could you imagine if people thought there was a legitimate shot they would emergency ban Nexus of Fate? That would be like every Reddit post every day. <laughs> what, did, did, did we just have this conversation a couple months ago? <laughs> I, I, but I, I think, think this case is different. In this case, we <laughs> had a premiere event. We had all the data from the event, right? And it also passes the, you know, field test. You play Hogak, you're like, this is, this is BS. This is terrible, right? And then all the data backs it up. Like, what, what more do we need, right? Like, I, I feel in the case where if everyone has decided it should be banned, then you should just do it. But if we're, if we're thinking, you know, we don't know, we need some more tournaments and, you know, yada, yada, stuff like that, then I think it's fine not to do the emergency ban. But if we all know it's going to be banned, then why waste these couple of premier modern events? Because it's just like rotating standard, right? You're not going to buy into modern. You're not going to drop like $150 on ley lines or whatever just to have the whole format shaken up in a month. So you're just going to wait and then go play Hearthstone. I don't know, right? Like <laughs> it's, it's just this weird thing where no one is playing standard. No one is playing modern. And then we all go enjoy the sun outside. I don't know. Like no one is playing magic because we're in a weird place right now. It is a really weird time. Uh, waiting for rotation in standard, waiting for bannings in modern. It is an awkward time for multiple formats. But I, I think I don't know. I think modern will survive two more weeks of of Hogak uh, is not ideal and it really sucks that two of the biggest GPs of the year featuring the modern format are going to get uh, I don't want to say ruined but negatively impacted by by this deck but I don't know I guess I can see arguments for both sides but I'm okay with the waiting for the announcement it's only two weeks if it was two months maybe I'd feel differently but <laughs> I think we can survive two more two more all Weeks. right, so everyone at Magic Fest Vegas, come up to Seth and be like, can you spell sling some modern with me? <laughs> and then just bust out the Hogak. I'll provide the Hogak deck on the side for you, okay? Bring, but what if bring Seth your, also bring brings your, Hogak? <laughs> seriously, though, if you're, if you're going to GP Vegas, bring your commander deck and come hang out with us and play commander. Like, you don't got to play the modern main event and get Hogak to have a good time. Actually, I bet you you'll probably have a better time if you don't sign up for the modern main event and just, like, hang out and have fun for the weekend, so. But what if their idea of fun is to have a turn two 8-8 eight, eight trample yeah, or no, get what's hit more fun by than an 8-8 eight, eight trample? Eight, eight trample? Come on. <laughs> an 8-8 eight, eight trample with a bunch of 4-3s with haste. <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> uh, all right, we're 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 running long. Let's hit some fish mail quick on the way out the door today. Richard, take it away. All right. Uh, one Hugo Zarite. Oh, wait, I forgot the intro. If you have questions, send them to at MTG Goldfish with the hashtag MTG Fish Mail, and we'll get to your questions on air. So at one Hugo Zarite. Ban Faithless Looting. Unban Git Probe or Ponder. That way you don't punish too much other decks that play faithless looting i'm gonna assume fairly mm. i don't know if you can so, unban so you ponder can, so here we're suggesting ban looting and unban probe and ponder what if I you just unban probe and ponder to let the other decks do a bit of unfair things to you or oh the other options ban everything <laughs> well i think i i like i would love ponder uh, I think, I think Ponder would be a sweet card to have. Uh, I mean, the, what is the argument again? Like, combo decks get a little too consistent, but like, eh, I mean, we have Faithless Looting. That's, that's pretty, <laughs> that makes I certain mean, graveyard I, I synergies very twice consistent. twice as terrified if my opponent was playing a combo deck and they pondered instead of Serum Visions. <laughs> right. Right. It's obviously better than Serum Visions though, right? But I, I mean, eh. But like, the combo decks aren't even blue. <laughs> right? Like. Yeah. I, I can see an argument for preordain or ponder, like one of those maybe. I don't think you want probe though. Free spells. Oh are yeah, no probe. At the root of our a lot of our modern problems. So I, I'm pretty much blanket against uh, more free spells coming into the format, with very few exceptions. But I don't know. I just wish that faithless suiting maybe made you put the cards on the bottom instead of your graveyard. I think that's where a lot of the brokenness comes from. It's just how graveyard centric modern is, even outside of Hogak, just like the format in general and faithless suiting being so easy to get cards in the graveyard. 
I'm imagining a world to where, like, imagine Phoenix having both Faithless Looting and Bonder. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, w- that would be that would be pretty bad. I, I think just graveyard. What if, like, every time a card enters the graveyard, a player takes two damage? Does that exist? Yeah. No, I don't think it does. Does it? No, no, I don't no, think it does. So, I like, if, if so. you want to, like, dredge eight or something, <laughs> like, you take 16, right? Like, good for you. Oh, yeah. You can play fraying sanity to really show them. <laughs> Maybe that's too much because yeah, you can just like uh, thought twist them and you're like, ha oh, six damage. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. I'm gonna hit you with a bunch of phoenix. <laughs> it's just like thought twist flashback. You're dead. You're like, what? <laughs> How is this even fair? Hmm. But yeah, I I don't know. I I don't think they're gonna unban probe or ponder because. Even if it's fine now, eventually it will not be fine. What about preordain instead? <laughs> okay, what what is preordain what is, is the most is likely between, blue right? card to unban? Probe, ponder, preordain, or uh, dig through time? Preordain. Uh, treasure probe. cruise wasn't on the list, was it? <laughs> <I'm> probe. <laughs> you didn't say treasure cruise. I would have voted treasure cruise. Wait, you, I think probe which is, is better, treasure closer. cruise or or dig through oh, time? Oh, wait. The one that would have to be banned or most likely to get unbanned? Unbanned. So the yeah. least. Oh. oh. The yeah, least probe, probe bad is definitely of not all getting blue cards. <laughs> yeah, pre- Pond- preordain. I think ponder or preordain. Probably preordain is worse than ponder. So yeah, I would go with preordain too. I think probe, no? Probe doesn't really oh. do much. It triggers so many probe free is free. spells. It's just like, it yeah. triggers prowess and infect stuff. And ugh. Oh, we forgot mental misstep. <laughs> oh. How about mental oh, no. misstep? Actually, no. is that no, even that, that bad right now? Like, hold on. I'm thinking about it. Is it that bad, though? It is annoying <laughs> like, that every deck can oh, play. I'm holding mental misstep. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I countered a stitcher supplier. <laughs> no, I, I think the problem is everyone has to just run four mental missteps, which would sell yeah. so many packs. <laughs> uh, Matt Hudson, 35. Why does Seth hate his European followers so much? Every time spoiler season starts, it's always the Euro-friendly stream that gets cut. Can't we have parody with Tuesday, Thursday stream cut once in a while? Please, so USA fans feel the same pain. <laughs> really, it's just uh, on Mondays. My normal day is uh, do the podcast at noon and then jump right into the stream, basically, as soon as we finish recording the podcast. The problem is spoilers don't come out until like 11 a.m. my time, so there's just literally no way for me to make a spoiler video and do the podcast and do the stream. So that's why Monday gets cut. It's just purely the way that spoilers, like the time that spoilers come out. When Tuesday and Thursday, spoilers are already out and done, so it's not as big of a deal. So even if I wanted to, there's just not enough hours in the day to make a spoiler video and podcast and stream all within like the same six hour or four hour period. But I do feel bad for European uh, fans. So we're back today, though. I guess actually the podcast goes up after, <laughs> after, after the stream. But uh, we will be streaming next week on Monday, I think. Uh, Taylor O'Brisket, do you think Wizards could print an "Is It Deathright Shaman" that makes you discard instead of exile from graveyard? So tap and discard a land for one mana. Tap and discard a creature to loot. Tap and discard a non-creature. Deal two damage. Maybe Rakdos? It seems like a madness enabler. Maybe I'm just thinking of that because of the commander decks. I think that would definitely be fairer than actual death. You think anyone Shaman. would play that outside of a combo deck? <laughs> That's like card disadvantage, right? <laughs> like I don't I don't want to be discarding lands to to make that's a like land. changing my land into a Simeon Spirit Guide. Like, yeah. I don't want to be doing that. <laughs> I think you'd probably want some synergy for yeah. it. I don't think you'd play it, but if you had some sort of synergy to uh, to work with the graveyard or madness, then I think you would play it. Yeah. It, it, I think it's so fair that it becomes unfair in the sense that you wouldn't play it fairly anymore. <laughs> you have to play it in an unfair manner. Uh, Slay the Divine. I'm surprised none of you mentioned Extort when talking about Kyrick. You pay two life and get three back. <laughs> he makes cards like Pond of a Blight insanely usable. Ooh. Uh, yeah. That's a that's a good point. I hadn't really thought that's about really good. Extort. Yes. Yeah, that is really good. <laughs> uh, Chris P. Jones, outside of Shroud, Intimidate, and Cumulative Upkeep, what other keywords do you think they'll never reprint in a standard set? Banding. Phasing? <laughs> Banding. Definitely banding. Not happening. <laughs> I love that. What was the one video, the, the Commander Clash video we did where, like, 
<laughs> no one knew how banding works. We, so we, we were just like, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I still want to know uh, how banding actually works. I just works. want to attack Seth because I think his thing is banding and I'm not really sure what it does. <laughs> <laughs> also, also phasing. Phasing yeah. is almost as bad as banding. But it, Teferi's Isle is pretty cool. I, I am pretty sure I at least played like two or three years of magic phasing incorrectly. <laughs> as a kid phasing is a hard one I think intimidate they'll bring back at some point yeah I, I don't think intimidate's bad at all actually or same with shroud I, I feel they're not as like keeping of upkeep I understand banding I understand like the rules are just hard to keep track of but shroud and intimidate like it's just hard to understand maybe so I feel like they could come around on something like that magic would be so much better if hexproof was shroud yeah like I, I feel like that was like I get why they made the change because apparently people were treating shroud like hexproof and it wasn't intuitive to some people but I think that the game functions better when you have shroud instead of hexproof yeah I think hexproof is a very rude mechanic <laughs> 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 Billy L320 when is the best time to buy singles from Commander 2019 uh, so normally there's a pretty long window with Commander sets because I'm still seeing at some of my local uh, like Walmarts and Targets last year's Commander decks on the shelves a full year later so normally prices are going to hit their floor after a couple months maybe like after Throne of Eldraine releases this fall and then Typically, you're going to have six months, maybe even up to a year before anything starts really increasing in price. There's a pretty long window. Although, right. the decks have already kind of, like, gone up, right? Yeah. So The Commander 2018 decks? Yeah. I think uh, they have... Or 2019. They have a, or 2019. Yeah. Oh, the... The ones right the now, price. the ones that we're talking about. Like, to so pre-order. I think, yeah. So, I wouldn't pre-order them now. Because I think prices are pretty inflated for the new cards. I'm seeing a lot of, like, $20, and I don't think <clears throat> there's any way those cards can maintain the price where they're on the shelves. So I'd probably wait a little bit uh, before picking up singles, uh, but then pick them up sometime in the next year after waiting, like, two months or three months to uh, let the prices come down. I mean, like, cause, like, sometimes I wonder, like, is it not just better to buy the deck as a whole than even try to get... If you just want that one card, unless you need, like, multiple copies... I think the value in general is pretty good, especially if you will make some use out of the other cards. I think if you're like a really established commander player and you just need one copy of a single card and you're not going to use anything else, then maybe you buy the single. But if you're going to get some use out of the rest of the cards, you might as well just buy the deck in a lot of cases. The value looks pretty solid overall. Like prices are inflated right now, but a lot of the decks at current prices are close to $200 in terms of like total value, which which obviously, like I said, that's inflated because we're seeing some like random like Doom Artisan twenty dollars because prices just haven't adjusted yet. But I do think all the decks have enough value that it's a uh, it's pretty fine to just pick up the whole deck if you want some of the cards from it. Like Chrome Shell crap. <laughs> Except, I think you should just buy that one for twenty five cents <laughs> instead that's of buying the deck. Buy but... the whole deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, last question: The Tank eighteen will Saffron Olive. Jank out Vegas with Hammer Time. It would be awesome to see a budget deck in such a tournament. Oh, well, I'm not planning on playing the main event, but it would be really sweet to Hammer Time people with a budget deck at Vegas. So, uh, I don't know. Too many Hogaks, though. And <laughs> Hammer Time or Hogak Time? <laughs> <laughs> And I want to have time to meet people, so if I, I always yeah, feel like if I sign up for time the tournament, way, <laughs> yeah. you do some Hogak decks, and then you'll be <laughs> done for the day pretty fast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Status update, 0-3, oh, uh, we played Magic, <laughs> and I'm ready to hang out. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, that's all our questions. Uh, thank you to everyone who sent them in. If you have questions, you can send them to at MTGGoldfish with the hashtag MTGFishMail, and we'll get to your questions on air. And I believe that that brings us to the end of episode 237 of the MTG Goldfish podcast. So, Richard Krim, thanks for hanging out. Thanks, to everyone, for listening. We will be back next week to talk about whatever happens in the world of magic. So, until then, this is the crew signing out.